just thank you for all that I have in you, and all that you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Jesus Christ is the only one that can set the captive free. Not Muhammad, not some kind of idol God, but the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's Amen. what he died for. And no matter what the situation, no matter what the problem, Jesus Christ is there. I know because he saved me from alcoholic. I was an alcoholic. I was all kinds of getting high, all kinds of perver perverse and disgusting things. But the Lord Jesus Christ just came and he just he just saved me. That's what he do for you. I mean, you, you sitting at home, you don't know what to do. I mean, you confused, you're bound, depression got you everywhere, thinking you got to smoke a cigarette. You ain't got to smoke no cigarette. Don't smoke that cigarette. Do not smoke that cigarette. Don't drink that whiskey. Don't put on that condom to get sexual pleasure. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Don't get into prostitution. Don't snort that coke. Amen. God has life, and that life is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I know he's a delivering, setting free, demon casting out God. He saved my soul, and he could do the same for you. And I'm praying, I'm praying that you get a, you get a, you get a hold of Jesus Christ. He's joy, Amen. I know you've been around some folks. They, they, you know, they, they had it with church. They had it with the Lord. So you don't see, you don't conceive the freedom and power and deliverance that Jesus brings. But the power of God, Hallelujah, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will set you free. I'm happy to be here today. I give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Savior of my soul. I, I thank God for Apostle Coleman, amen, for uh, uh, asking me to come down. I really appreciate that, giving me a chance to share what God has put in my spirit. I thank God for my wife, Tawana Jefferson, Evangelist Tawana Jefferson, and my two sons that are here. But most of all, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for all that he's doing. And I want you to know that today is your day, and you're turned into the right channel. you turned into the right broadcast, because Jesus Christ has the answer for you. I know because after he saved my soul, he set me on a mission to go out and win souls. And I've been doing a ministry with the home amen called the sandwich ministry and God has done nothing but save souls people have been set free by the power of God he wants to do the same for you and the power of God is greater is greater and you don't have to trust in the devil anymore amen when you give your life to Jesus Jesus does it all for you hallelujah I'm glad let's bow our heads and pray amen I don't do anything without praying glory to God precious God in the name of Jesus Today, 
Hallelujah. You are ordained today for somebody to get the message. And we know, God, that through your power and through the anointing that you placed upon your word, that somebody, somebody's getting loose from the hands of the demons today. For I believe in a preaching the gospel to the demons have to let go of those that are held captive. Satan, you're a liar. And you will not prevail this hour, for this hour belongs to the Lord. And he's a free, powerful, giving God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I feel blessed. I don't sing, but I make a joyful noise. I feel blessed. I got the best A. I I feel blessed. Oh, I feel blessed. And I got the best. And Jesus Christ is that best that you can have. Amen. Jesus Christ wants to minister to you today, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just humbled to get into his word and share it with you, because I know who my Savior is, and I know that he is a, a perfect, perfect God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing of God. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of uh, Genesis. Amen. Turn to the book of Genesis, and I want you to turn to chapter... Amen. Turn to chapter 12. Amen. Turn to chapter 12. Amen. Thank God for Apostle Coleman once again giving me a chance to um, minister the word on this broadcast today. I, I'm really encouraged by that, and I'm truly grateful. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 12. Amen. The Lord gave me this word, and I'm going to give it out to you today. Amen. It's something about the Lord. The Lord is sweet. He's just so sweet. I thank God. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter tw uh, 11, excuse me. Genesis chapter 11 and verse 7. Amen. Verse 7. It says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto, and said, unto thy seed will I give this land, and there built he an altar unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Mm. I'll repeat that again. There he built it an altar unto the Lord. I'll repeat that again. There he built an altar unto the Lord. What about building? What about building people? An altar to the Lord. God. Jesus Christ. Too many times we're building altars on everything but Jesus. You're not going to get free until you build a consecration to God. Hallelujah. For if you build an altar, if you build a private joyful prayer life, if you build a, if you build an effort, an effort, if you build an effort to the Lord Jesus Christ in committing your life, committing your life to God. When you build an altar, when you make a private place in your room, in your kitchen, in your restroom, wherever God leads you to pray, in the, in the comfort of your bedroom, Whatever God leads you to do, when you build an altar to the Lord, you are blessed. Oh, I feel this thing today. See, <laughs> you got to build an altar to the Lord. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. He's the only one that can set you free. He's the only one that can deliver you. See, I'm willing, and I know that as I build an altar to the Lord, as I say, God, in the name of Jesus, Oh, glory to God. I feel the anointing. In the name of Jesus, here I am. This is going on. That's going on. God, you got to do something. Don't you know God answers? Woo. But it all depends who you're building an altar to. It's got to be the Lord. Ah, that's why you got to get saved. I didn't say, say grace. I ain't talking about God knows my heart. Ah, nah, that's not building an altar. You got to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I can't even get this thing right. Glory to God. And when you decide to do that, you're building an altar to the Lord. Build your altar to the Lord. For the devil will love. The devil will love. 
Oh, I feel this thing today. The devil would love for you to build an altar to witchcraft. Ah, yes. A lot of you are building altars to witchcraft. Hallelujah. Believing that you are a Scorpio and a Gemini. You ain't no Scorpio. You ain't no Leo. You ain't no Cancer. Hallelujah. Born by God. Hallelujah. Some people build altars to, to, to soothsayers. And some people build altars to witchcraft workers. And, you know, calling Cleo. Cleo, it better get it right. Don't call no psychic. Hallelujah. Psychics are liars. Psychics are witchcraft workers that's right I say it slow psychics are ungodly psychics are witches psychics work for Satan and you call them don't build no altar to a psychic hallelujah God telling me to tell you build an altar to the Lord it's him that can set you free hallelujah I'm telling you the Lord gave me a ministry and we're dealing with all kinds of demonic atmosphere on the green Hallelujah! For 14 years, I had to deal with with all kinds of demonic uh, bondages. A lot of the men that come to the services were possessed. And God has always sent us an anointing. I didn't call no psychic. Never had to. I didn't call no witchcraft worker or madam going to hell if she don't get saved. My God, I just trusted in God. As I build my altar to the Lord, God provided sent the cure and the cure is Jesus because when you're an alcoholic you don't have a disease you got a demon in your belly and hey glory to God we got Christian radio stations in New Haven Connecticut we need an anointed radio station not a bunch of Christian psychiatrists giving me a story about uh, sister Mary Bell in 1950 making cookies for the church my God, church is more than making cookies for the church and making nice quilts and nice sweaters. Sister Mary Ether made a nice sweater. Oh, boy, that's nice. But does she have an anointing? <laughs> Let's set the captives free. God sets people free from sins like homosexuality. That's right. Ain't nobody born gay. Hallelujah. That's a demon. Ah, glory to God. That's a sexual perversion. The action of it, my God. The United States trying to shut you up. You can't even say nothing about it. My God. Hallelujah. Sexual perversion. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Who appeared unto him. See, when you build an altar to the Lord, he appears to you. Some of you want God to appear to you. Some of you want God to answer your prayer. Hallelujah. You got to build an altar to the Lord. For the church shall rise up in the last day with the anointing of God for the answers of mankind. Woo, hallelujah. I feel this thing today. My God, you don't need a quick fix. Hallelujah, you need an altar. Hallelujah, in your bedroom or at your church, you need an altar. That's why you need to be in a ministry that's anointed. Hallelujah, with a gift. Hallelujah, to set the captives free. My God, mm-mm-mm. Let's skip on down to the 11th verse. My God. Hey, hallelujah. So I say glory to God. Now, Abraham and Sarah, this is their story. This is their story. This is their story. Abraham and Sarah. Got to mention that. Once again, this is their story. See, I want to take you slow. I don't want to talk too fast. I want you to get this. Glory to God. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold, he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold, that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife. Verse 12, you following me? And once again, Genesis 12, verse 12. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Verse 13, say I pray thee, thou art my sister. Glory to God. Abraham, the man of faith, the father of faith. Glory to God. Got fearful about his wife and actually told her to lie because he was scared or what the Egyptians were going to do. Hallelujah. But, in, but now that we're saved, 
Now that we know God, now that Jesus Christ has entered into our lives, you don't have to fear anything or lie because of fear. You know, the devil puts fear on you. Satan puts fear on you so that you can lie, backslide, and trust in some witchcraft worker and superstition and, and all this kind of filthy garbage. But Abraham told his wife, say you're my sister. My God. And that's what Sarah did. But let me tell you something. Let me show you something here. Glory to God. Amen. One part when he said, when he said right here that, um, say I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. Amen. Let me tell you something. Glory to God. One thing about, one thing about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. One thing about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, if you don't watch out, if you don't watch out, the devil will always give you an excuse to lie. But when God's power come into your life, you have no excuse to lie. You got confidence in Jesus. My God. When you got confidence in Jesus, you don't care who's trying to kill you. We need some preachers that'll stand up later for what they're trying to do to us. We ain't scared of witches. We ain't scared of superstition. We ain't scared of threats. We ain't scared of the Ku Klux Klan. We ain't scared of the Ku Klux Klan. We ain't scared of the black militant groups. We ain't scared of nothing. We ain't scared of demons. We ain't scared of your hexes. Hallelujah. We ain't scared of voodoo. We ain't scared of black magic. We ain't scared of the occult. I tell you, I feel. I'm tired of the church talking a little weak today. I'm like, Hallelujah. We're a little weak. We're too weak, church. We're too weak. Take it all. Take it down from sanctification. Sanctification is power. And it's to be clean. We need some tapes, not about get out of debt. That's all we got today, how to get out of debt by the power of God. That's nice. I want to get out of debt myself. Nice to get out of debt. But we need some sanctification tapes. We need some tapes about stop smoking cigarettes, stop drinking wine, whiskey, stop cheating on your wife. Ooh, glory to God. We need those types of videotapes. My God. Hallelujah. mm mm, -mm. Mm, 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 mm. The saints of God ain't scared of nothing. Oh, witchcraft worker, you can put a little dust on my door. I kick it off my door. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. I'm blood protected. Hallelujah. I ain't got to fear no Egyptians. I ain't got to tell my wife, Tawana, be careful. Don't say you anointed. They may kill us. I say, Tawana, say what you want to say. Hallelujah. Don't you say it in the Lord. Hallelujah. I ain't got to fear nothing. Nothing comes against my family. And the God let me know as I was, I was, you know, uh, as I was on my way to the service here on the studio, God says, son, I want you to tell the church uh, to get back to fighting, get back to sanctification. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. We ain't got to fear nothing on today. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. You can't put no hex on me. You can't curse me. You can't tell me that I'm going to be in poverty. I got the blood. And I know one thing. Let me tell you something. You can't tell me because of my color. You can't tell me because of my heritage or my neighborhood dwellings. When God is in my life, I can't be cursed. That's why saints are wearing down pastors. Oh, pastor, my family said I'm not going to get the money. They say that I'm a minority, and minorities don't get more than non-minorities. I'm not no minority. I'm a priority. I'm not a minority. I'm a priority, and I'm, I'm on God's priority list. I feel this anointing today. Church, we ain't got to be scared. We got to stick with the old standards. No, I, I, I know, see, some of y'all want a tune-up sermon. You know, that's, what, that's what's wrong with the church. You want somebody to tune up. Uh, you want somebody to squall. I'm not a tune-up person. I'm not a car mechanic. That's an auto shop job to tune up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let them go and tune you to your car up. It ain't about tuning up. It ain't about squalling. Hallelujah. It's about the word. Oh, glory to God. And I'm here to tell you, church, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Church, we're taken down to win the young people. All this hip-hop garbage gospel. Ain't I tired of that crap? Ain't no hip-hop gospel. It's a lie from the pit. Glory to God. We got to be different. I know some of y'all bought the CDs. I know you're bound. Hallelujah. <laughs>
That's all right. You get over it. The word, the church is supposed to be different than the world. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I tell you, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Turn to Genesis again, chapter 21. You ain't got to fear nothing when you're in God. Somebody say glory. Genesis chapter 21. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar. Y'all got it? Genesis 21, verse 14. Gave a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. I want you to read verse 16. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. Listen, those of you that know this story, you know this is Ishmael. You know this is Ishmael. And Ishmael and his mother were cast out of Abraham and Sarah's house. You got it? Cast out. Sometimes you feel cast out of the people of God. You feel cast out of the church. And if you research Ishmael, God talked about Ishmael, the whole nations was going to be against his hand and his hand against the nations. And I'm telling you, church, that's why we got to get anointed, man. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're playing a show. We're having nice gospel concerts. But is anybody getting saved? You know, you sing it all nice with your own. Oh, we the Baptist church. I ain't saying Baptists are wrong. We the Baptist church, and we got, we, got, we got a CD coming out next month, and you won't even go out and sing to the homeless. You don't want no, 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 what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I got some brothers on that green. Let them come to some of these gospel concerts and sit up front. All the great gospel artists will go like this. Ah, that's terrible. Hey, supposed to be about making a CD. Hallelujah. My God, it's nice to get a CD, but if you ain't soul-minded, if it ain't about winning soul, it's about getting on top of the charts. And we take love songs and turn them into gospel. Y'all just... When I come to church, I don't want to be reminded of Barry White and Earth, Wind, and Fire. I want to hear the holy songs. Now, I have the force worship. It just goes up. See what I mean? Glory to God. We're taking love songs, singing with R&B artists. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I know y'all into the music. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's your favorite contemporary artist. I know. But God said you cannot, you cannot put that in ministry. The ministry is serious. My God. The ministry is serious. It's about winning souls. It's about suicide being cast out. It's about depression being eliminated. My God. Listen. As she went over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot, for she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted her voice and wept. Verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called the Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee? Hagar, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Let me tell you something. God hears where you are. The mother prayed over the boy, and the results came. She laid over against him. Like it was a bow shot. You see, what's that saying? Ooh, you see this? She got in position. See? And the Bible says, I, I can't find the verse right now. 
But the Bible said that the nations was going to be against Ishmael and his hand against the nations. But the mother, she didn't pray a long prayer. She just laid over against him like it was a bow shot. Let me tell you something. You might think bow shot's a little word, but that means target. If I'm taking a bow and shot, I got a target in mind. You understand what I'm saying to you? You understand? The church has to get in a sanctified position as a target against the devil. Because the young people, demons are attacking them. Some of you parents today, yes, a lot of you parents did go wrong. I ain't going to water down the truth. We have bad kids because of bad examples. But some of you parents, I know the church don't want to hear this. Some of the religious people say I'm giving you an excuse to sin. But some of you parents are doing a good job, but the demons are on your children. Oh, yeah, God. And, a, and, a, and the devil's trying to take the minds of our kids. They got all kinds of shootings in school. They got illy, you know, putting drugs with, you know, embalming fluid. And you got, you know, over the internet, you learn about sadomasochism, where you can take a woman, chain her up, and ha have her legs. I know, I know we're on TV, but have her legs apart, and you're whipping her with whips. And that's supposed to be sexually enticing. And then you got, ooh, God, well, then you got gangster rap teaching people how to kill and oh boy you got all kinds of sex maniacs and molestation and who glory to God but you know the hand is against the children the nation don't care how they're polluting our children and some of us good parents now I know like I said don't get me wrong don't get me wrong explain myself so you don't think I'm watering the gospel I know we have more evidence I know we have more evidence that bad parenting is the reason. I know that. I know that. I know we have evidence that bad parenting is the reason for bad kids. But I, I don't know church. I don't know religious people. You might find this hard to believe. But there is such cases. There is such cases as a good parent with terrible kids. I know you don't receive that. Anyways, so when Hagar laid against her son, as a bow shot, God said, whew, he was with the lad. And look at verse 20. It said, ooh, I like this. It says right here, and God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. See, she laid in a bow shot position. And, he, and her bow shot position became his ministry, because an archer deals with bows and shots. You see, when you're, when you're in archery, you're, you got the shot and you're heading for the bow. What is God saying? That's just a parable. That's not in the Hebrew and Greek. So don't look in the Hebrew and Greek. That's a parable. Listen. Church, glory to God. Get in a sanctified position. Stop taking down. The position that you lay in sanctification over your children and family will be their ministry. If you stop, stop, stop yourself. Say, wait a minute. I got to get back sanctified. I can't be smoking cigarettes. I can't be having homosexual relationships. I can't be having nine boyfriends at a time. I can't be cheating on my wife. I'm sanctified now. I can't be looking at Playboy and ooh, getting the books and looking at a girl's breasts. I'm sanctified now. Oh, boy. Mm -mm. I can't be smoking pipe and cigars. I can't be drinking whiskey and Gordon's gin. I'm sanctified now. God. Hallelujah. I got to live right. I got to wash my tongue. I got to have a conscience. I'm sanctified now. And then if you're a preacher, you got to be sanctified. Because if the preacher ain't sanctified, how can you preach sanctification? Can't do it, buddy. Can't do it, sir. you got to come down off your pride. you got to get out of your flesh and let God deliver you. Because you got to be sanctified. we got to go back to sanctification. This mother just laid over her son. In a bow shot position. He became an archer. God said, if you want the kids and your family to follow me, you get in position. And I will take it from there. Oh, we got to get sanctified. We got to have a testimony of conscience. Not testimony of wallet. We got testimonies of wallets. Lord, bless me with money. I got a car. I bought a house last week. Called is good. We got a testimony of the wallet. 
and we got a testimony of the checking account, but where's the testimony of the conscience? Are you concerned about how you talk to your brother? Are you concerned about how you talk to your neighbor? You know, I believe in God that our ministry is going to have our own church. We're looking for a church building now. The sandwich ministry. Now, the Lord is leading me to be a pastor. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. And as I step out into the pastorialship, I got to be more concerned about how I'm treating the people, not how much sermons I can preach. How am I treating the people? Now, if they lie on me and I know that I treated them right, that's a different story then they're liars. But I got to make sure with the best that I can do, with God leading me, that I got to make sure that people can trust me. And I'm not an extortioner, preachers. Extortioner. God's going to cut down the extortioners. Going to cut it down. Going to cut it down. They don't even prophesy to you until you give them money. You want to give the $100? I got a word for you. They're the only ones that get prophesied to. Those that give a dollar, you might get a handshake if you're lucky. Money, 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 money. God's got a word. The preacher's supposed to have a word. An anointing. Not trying to find out if the gospel is black, but an anointing. Afrocentric is racial. Afrocentric preaching in churches are too racial now. Black people ain't got no special market on God's anointing. Whoever's, a, no, whoever's open got anointing. Afro-American churches. How you think that make white people feel? That's terrible. Best black sermons. Best black sermons. There's no such thing as a best black sermon. Sermons deliver you from bondage. Not find out what heritage you are. Shh. No, I'm telling you. God is hot. He's hot. We're into racial. We're into all sociological junk. And nobody has a mystery about Jesus anywhere. I'm not saying all people. But where's the anointing church? Where's the anointing church? We need churches that have help for you. My God. That'll have help in the time of trouble. Somebody say glory to God. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 10. My Lord. Jesus chapter 10. Oh God. Feel the anointing up here this day. Today. Amen. Where's the anointing? Can we leave out in your church and say, man, he's, he's a different guy. Or can we say God? Anyways, chapter 10, 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. See, I like repeating it in case you didn't hear it the first time. 1 Kings chapter 10. And when the queen of Sheba, when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. She heard the fame of Solomon concerning. In other words, his fame related to the Lord. Not himself, but to the Lord. Now, she came to prove him with hard questions. You know what? Let me tell you something. If a preacher don't know his rights in God, he's scared of hard questions. I don't ever want to be scared of hard questions. You hear me? <laughs> There's no need for me to be scared of hard questions. I have nothing to hide. Glory to God. There's no need for me to feel scared of hard questions. Ask any question you want. I believe in Jesus. I believe that if you ain't saved, you're going to bust hell wide open if you die before you repent. I believe that a man shouldn't be romancing a man. I believe he shouldn't be smoking tobacco or chewing tobacco. I believe he shouldn't be drinking booze or whiskey for the deep people. I believe, oh, I, that's what I believe. <laughs> Ask all the hard questions you want. We got them for you. Amen. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train. You understand? With camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. 
Understand? And there was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. I want y'all to get this. Taking my time. Like I say, I don't tune up. You want to tune up, go to the car shop. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, look at number five. Look at number five. I like this one. Listen up, church. Listen up, church. And the meat of his table. And the meat of his table. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She saw the meat of his table. That brother has some good meat. When are we going to go and hear some ministries that got the word instead of heritage? She, this was good meat. Biblical truths. Information about the gospel. Not about showing off. Not about how big you are. But good meat. Oh, church, we got to give people the meat. We can't give them what we think. We can't, all oh, people are dying, church. You know, you want to show off, you're showing off. Yeah, you got a big choir, so what? Hey, oh, I wonder if half of them are saved. Some people got nine, ten, twenty members in the choir. Ain't none of them saved. Oh, God. Where's the meat? Where's the meat? Like the old lady said in the commercial a long time ago, where's the beef? Hallelujah. <laughs> where's the meat? Glory to God. Listen, she saw the meat of his table. Somebody say glory to God. She saw the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel. Clothes don't mean anything. It ain't about the dress. It's about your heart. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That come as you are, that's only a doorknob sermon. But once you get in the church, you got to kill who you are with the help of the Lord. You can't kill who you are without God. See, come as you are. See, you can come to the church any old kind of way. But after you come to getting saved and to the knowledge of Christ, you got to start killing who you are. You can't be still wearing for brothers, not just sisters, they're always getting on the women. Start with the brothers first. If you say that you're a bishop or you're a minister, don't dress like the party boys. Supposed to be distinguished. I know we want to get on the women and their breasts and their, their loose garments. I know. We want to jump on them. They shouldn't wear tight shirts and they shouldn't wear this. They shouldn't wear uh, stuff like that. But some men, you, got, you can't dress like a homeboy. You can't dress like a homegirl. When you get saved, got to change up sometime. Makes a statement. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyways, listen. And his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no spirit in her. Wait a minute. Let's back this up. When she saw the meat, when she saw that he was in the word, when she saw that the sitting of his servants, they were paying attention to the preacher. They were interested in what the preacher had to say. They were paying close attention. That's why the Muslims look so powerful, because we might not like the way they live, but they pay attention to their minister. Now, I'm not attracted to be a Muslim. I'm just telling you why they look so powerful. Hallelujah. We got to sit like we're into it. Amen. We can't let people come to our churches and see us not into the sermon, talking about the preachers talking, acting like we don't want to be there. Glory to God. This this church was together. It wasn't about just Solomon riches and Solomon uh, uh, wisdom. This, she saw the congregation. And then on the other hand, Solomon himself had to be wise to have a church like this. That's another subject. Amen. Listen, and the attendance of his ministers and his cupbearers, their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. And ascent means advancement. He looked forward. He had a high mind. 
He had an advanced mind when he went into the house of God. An advanced mind. Saints, did you get that? Sinner, did you get that? An advanced mind. He wasn't interested in being the same old person. He wanted to go higher. He went to the house of God with joy. Oh, if we can go to the house of God with joy. If we can go to the house of God with joy. With advancement on our mind. We're saying that we're coming to make a change. We're not coming to be the same old person. We're going a little higher. I said we're going a little higher. We got to go higher. We can't stay the same. You can't stay the same drinking deacon. You can't stay the same drinking deacon. You can't drink that old wine. You get that liquor out of that basement. Just throw it away. God told me to tell you, get that liquor out of there. You can't play bingo and lotto and gamble and all that stuff. You can't do it no more. You're saved. You're saved now. You, you, you're saved now. You got the Lord. Oh, you know, we always go, my hands look new, my feet do too. I don't look at people's hands and feet to get inspiration. I, I got to get saved off your life, you know what I mean? The hands and feet are nice. I'm glad they look new. But what about your actions? I ain't looking at your toes. I want to look at your fingers. I want to look at your action. We're not going to go, well. <laughs> Anyways, feel the presence of the Lord. Verse 6. Now listen, wait a minute. Back at verse 5. When she saw all of this sanctified activity, it blew her mind. She, her mind was blown. There was no more spirit in her. So she was an empty, ready for God to pour in his spirit, you see. But the reason why that's not happening today, people, hate to tell you, but I got to tell you. When people go to synagogues today, they see everybody disrespecting, don't want to be there. So that's why no spirit leaves them. And they just go, oh, this is just another church. Oh, God. I don't want the unbeliever to say, this is another church. No, they should know. And if they don't want to admit it, then they're wrong. But at least the visible sign was there. The visible sign was there that when the church, when it came to the church, everything was in order. Church, the devil, the devil, it's demons. It's the spirit of, of warfare that's making you too tired to serve God. And you're getting tired and you don't want to preach anymore. And you're closing up shop and, you know, you just, you just don't want to come to the church anymore. And you say, well, I don't feel like going and I don't have to go. But my God, I ain't got to pray tonight. Now oh, there's a comedy show on. I ain't got to read my Bible this week. I need a break. I need to go to Florida. My God, the devil loves for us to back down, but we can't back down now. I know it's a little tough. I know you're dealing with situations, but that's where the fight come in. Oh, people, don't be scared of bills. You said God is your God, and you're scared of a shut-off notice? God gives you power over demons. He definitely going, he definitely, he will. He definitely will give you power over shut-off notice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's got to give you power over a shut-off notice. He's got to give. He will give you power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And she said to the king, praise God. She said to the king, amen. Amen. She said to the king, glory to God. It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts of thy wisdom. Amen. Of the acts of thy wisdom. So she reported, uh, she reported to, she reported to the king, oh God, that is true what she saw. Listen, I want to just take a little bit of break right here and, uh, amen. I just want to break and, and, and pray for you, amen, that you will get this word and let it grow in you, amen. And let, and let God, let God, let God lead you, amen, because when God leads you, you can't go wrong. And you'll love the life of sanctification. You'll love the life. God will allow you to love it. And you'll live it right. Hallelujah. Let us pray that you receive uh, part one of this word. Amen. Part one of this word that you be sanctified. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Help them to receive it. Help them to believe it. Help them to receive it and believe it. That they will live sanctified like they're supposed to and follow the ways of the Lord. Amen and amen. Let the Lord bless you, let him touch you, and let him do a miracle for you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, he's good. 
He's good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Oh, God. He's good. He's good. He's good. Somebody say, he's good. He's good. He's good. Amen. Amen. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's real good. Amen. He's real good. Amen. Okay, amen. As, as he touches you and ministers to you, your life will be different. Your life will never be the same. As he ministers to you, as he touches you, your life will never be the same. Amen. Amen. I want to just, right now, I want to do this poem for you. Amen. This Christian poem about sanctification that the Lord gave me. And I'm just going to give it out and believe God is going to touch you before we get into part two of the message. Amen. You know, sometimes it's good to take a little break and get you thinking while we're doing the poem about all you heard so far. Because sometimes the human mind, you know, when you, you give it too much, it don't tend to, to, to pick up what it should pick up. So I'm just going to give this poem to you as you think about what was said about the Word of God thus far. And after the poem, we're going to get right into part two of the message. Amen. I want you to think about this very one thing, that if you live safe for God, he'll give you everything. He'll touch you, he'll keep you, and give you power from on high. Hallelujah. He'll come into your life, and you will not die. The devil can't destroy you, no matter what he do. When God blesses you, he blesses you with new anointing and power to deliver and set free. When God comes into your life, there's total victory. God has the answers for your wants and all needs. God wants to do it. God wants you to succeed. Amen. So you don't live like a junkie, like an addict, with nothing but trouble and despair. When God comes down, he'll meet you there with power and anointing. That's real and blessed. Hallelujah. When you got the Lord Jesus Christ, you got the best. The anointing is rich and the demons will flee. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. And sin will not overtake you into captivity. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. He's coming into your room. I feel him delivering you from bondage and gloom. Come into the Lord. Amen. Do it now. As the Lord bless you. Amen. As the Lord bless you, he'll keep you in his way, and you can live life his anointed way. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Turn me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Thank you for that time of listening to the poem. Now we're getting back into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 17. Amen. Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 17. says right here that, for ye know that afterward, when he have rejected, when he have, for we know that afterward, hallelujah, when he, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place, the Bible said he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And this is Esau, this is Esau, amen. The Bible said that when it comes to Esau, who the verses before said he was a profane person, amen. And many of y'all know the story of Esau. He gave up his birthright for a bowl of soup because he was too tired from the fields. He gave up his birthright, which was given to him by God, because he was too tired. And he got tricked by his brother, twin brother, Jacob. Hallelujah. Oh, and once you research the story of Esau, when he gave up the birthright, and he told his brother, he said, I want this. You can have the birthright, so to speak. Glory to God. And the thing about it is this. Ooh, glory to God. When he gave up his birthright, the Bible says that that day his name was called Edom. Hallelujah. And you know what? Sometimes the demons... Put tiredness on you spiritually, not just naturally. They put tiredness on you spiritually. Why? Hallelujah. Because the devil doesn't want you to get the proper blessing that you deserve. The devil doesn't want you. He fights.
invite you. When you decide to make a, a decision for the Lord, he starts having everything go wrong in your life. The manager get on your nerves. The kids get on your nerves. Uh, shut off notices are coming in the mail. Uh, you can't seem to go to church and, and you can't seem to get a right mind. Monday you're all right. Tuesday you're confused. The devil, that's why the church must be anointed to stand behind you. The devil makes you tired, wears you down, but you can't give up the birthright. You can't give up your birthright. You can't backslide. Do not backslide. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, do not backslide. Don't give up that birthright. Don't give up that joy. Don't be depressed. You can't do it. I know you're struggling. I know it's hard, but God told you. He told you many times. You read the Bible yourself. You know he told you. He told you that he was going to make a way for you. Now you got to fight. You got to fight. We seem to want to escape loneliness and go to 10,000 comforters and 9,000 prophets. But you got to. Everybody's got to. Sometimes you got to stay in that bedroom and you got to stay there and say, God, all right, you said you're going to do it. And sometimes when you start out praying, who glory to God. God told you to pray from 7 to 8 on a Thursday night. And when it's 7 to Five. It seems like you get dry. It seems like you get real dry. It seems like you can't think of nothing to pray about. And then you put on the videotapes. That doesn't work. And then you put on Hallelujah, the gospel albums. That doesn't work. And the devil's fighting your mind, telling you you ain't saved. Oh, but people, you can't get too tired like Esau. Don't get tired like Esau and give up your birthright. Why? Because look at this verse. It says, for ye know now. That afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Look at this. Because this man gave up the birthright, he sought it carefully with tears, but he couldn't find no place of repentance. He sought it carefully with tears, but he couldn't find no place of repentance. In other words, he repented right. He cried, he snorted. See, when you sought some, when you seek something carefully with tears, that means he went through all the details of repenting, but he couldn't find a place. He repented, he really went all the way in repenting, but because he was disobedient, it was just too late. Because he was disobedient, it was just too late. Esau sought it carefully with tears, but he couldn't find a place of repentance. Isn't that what's happening today? Everybody's going to conferences. Everybody's doing all of the nice ways of repenting. But we can't seem to find a place to change. We can't seem to find that resting place of deliverance. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We can't seem to find that resting place of deliverance. We're seeking repentance with tears. We're doing it carefully. We're doing it carefully. But we can't seem to find the place of repentance. God's will is that we don't even live like this. We've got to. We've got to get into a place with God that we do not give up our birthright because we're tired. Because we don't want to get like Esau. You know what I mean? Don't be like Esau. You got to fight, saints. You got to stick in there. You got to say, devil, you a liar. I am blessed. I am rich and I'm not poor. I am well and I'm not sick. I am above and not beneath. Once we get too tired and start getting depressed, we'll be repenting and can't find a place. We start getting too tired and getting filled up with flesh. Oh yeah. See some of y'all, some of y'all about tired right now. And don't, don't, don't give up. 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 Don't get too tired because you want to find a place of repentance. God, oh, find that place. Don't be like Esau. Find that place of repentance. I love you all. Uh, thank you for this time. And
I pray that you were blessed because I know, glory to God, for a fact that Jesus has something for you. And you cannot get tired so you can get it. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you for the time. And I know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he's Lord in your life if you let him be. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's my Amen. wife, Tawana, and the two future prophets, uh, Ken and CJ. Amen. They're here, and I, I know they have something to say, and I'm, letting, I'm getting out of the way. Amen. Well, I thank God for all that was said today, and I, I ask the Lord to continue to bless you, and it's been wonderful. And I say hello, and hopefully, hopefully that you've been blessed by this, and just continue to look to God. Amen. Hey guys, come on. Oh, I know you think we gotta go. You wanna say Jesus? Jesus. 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 Alright. <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy serving. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you? As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table. Yes. Mm -hmm.